we've developed a device for pelvic organ prolapse in women. Uh, this device is intended for the non-surgical and disposable management of pelvic organ prolapse in women. That means non-surgical device, which is for uh, most, of, most of the women, about 80% of the women around the world, do not need any surgical treatment, but just non-surgical management, and we have provided a new device for them. What is uh, prolapse? Can you describe it as a condition? What does it mean for women? Well, it's very common. It's a very common condition in women that they feel that something is bulging out of the vagina. It's mainly, the, the reason for that is mainly the birth and the constipation and old age and lack of estrogen. But it happens in about 50% of the women around the world, all over. And it is very common, women are very much bothered by that, but most women, it's about 93% of the women, just do not come forward and say, I've got a problem. That means the lack of the ability to talk about it is tremendous here. Only about 6 to 7% of the women come forward and say, I've got a problem, please help me, or at least advise me what to do and how to deal with this problem. And is that because they are embarrassed or is it they're afraid of the treatment? I mean, especially if you're, you're saying it was up to now a surgical intervention. Well, mainly embarrassed. I think this is quite of a taboo, one of the certain few taboos that we've got for women. And you don't talk about it because it goes with the body uh, image. It goes with anything like uh, being an old lady with that because I've heard that my grandma had something like this. And this is part of it. But the other part is the fact that what, have, what we have today is not very useful and women already know about it, that surgery is not good enough and the other, the other uh, means of treatment are also not as good as uh, we, th we thought it would be. So you have this treatment. Um, can you give us an idea of how many people it might benefit within Europe or, or a percentage? Well, let's talk about the world first. We think that, uh, first of all, the, it's about 50%, more or less, of the women population around the world have some form of pelvic organ prolapse. Out of these, only, as I said, 6 to 7% really come forward and say, oh, we've got a problem. By the end of the day, we think that about 135 million women around the world live with such incontinence which is symptomatic. And in Europe, you know, it's about 28% of the world in this case. So you're talking about 28% of the women in Europe uh, with, with uh, some form of uh, prolapse. And are, are you at a stage where this product will be available? I mean, is it known about within the, the gynecological profession among general practitioners? We've just concluded developing the device. Um, we, uh, we have a company which develops uh, vaginal devices which are intended for the non-surgical and disposable uh, management of such pelvic floor dysfunctions. One of them uh, is the pelvic organ prolapse, which we have just concluded developing. And the device is ready for the market. It's got a CE mark, which means um, uh, ability to market within the European community. And we just received the FDA clearance for that, which means the Federal Drug and uh, Food Administration. And this, uh, we're just now moving forward towards uh, commercializing the device. And have any companies taken that up yet? Uh, have you, is there interest in the product? Yes, we've got a few companies interested in that. We're still looking forward, but this is in the process. And we, one of the things that, obviously, as I mentioned, this is a worldwide problem. So eventually, this will reach Europe as well. In a sense, it's uh, surprising that it's, if it's a common condition, why haven't we done something sooner? Is this a question of research into women's conditions being neglected and overlooked? Absolutely, yes just like that. The, it, it's amazing to say, but the last non-surgical innovation in this arena came into the market about 23 years ago. And I can show you the, um, the new, the, I'm sorry, the old invention that we have now at hand. This is something that looks like that. This is quite a small one, even much, much bigger than that. And this is, it's a good thing, but the logistic behind it is, is terrible because women just like, don't like it, they just hate it. The, the, the point here is that the woman have to come to the doctor every three months in order to replace, to clean the device, replace it, and there's uh, much discomfort in that, even pain. 
So by the end of the day, women just refrain from using that. And this is why we decided to go and de develop a device which looks completely different, going back to the arena of the very much likely to be the menstrual tampon, something that would look like a tampon that about 70% of the women around the world know how to use tampons or use tampons. So this is why we moved into the arena of the tampons. So we developed several devices like this. A uh, previous device of ours was for stress urinary incontinence. It's no longer ours. It was acquired by Kimberly Clark. It's already on shelves in North America, not in Europe yet. And to your question, yes, the authorities are not very much um, aware of the women's need. And this is why there's a new movement now, actually developing, so trying to push forward the term of femtech, as mean technologies for feminine use. And this is part of it, and we're much, very much involved in this. What would your new invention look like? Okay, I can share the device. Actually, all our devices come ready for use within a package, just a sealed package like this. And we just open the package and takes out the device. This is our devices, as you can see, very much like the menstrual tampon. It is inserted by the woman herself into the vagina whenever she wants and wherever she is. It doesn't matter where she is. She might be on vacation just as well. And the device is just within, within the vagina. Only then she presses the plunger. It becomes a ring and then continue pressing the plunger. The device and the applicator separate and the applicator goes to the dustbin. The device remains in the vagina for up to seven days or until the time that she wants to take it out. And then by the end of the use, she just pulls the string. The device shrinks back into tiny dimensions and just slide out of the vagina for disposal. So the main concept here, or I would even say the main two concepts here, the one is the shift of control. That means the shift of the control of the medical condition moves into the hands of the woman. And the second is the freedom to decide. That means a woman may decide when she wants to insert the device, when she wants to take it out. This is absolutely up to her. Nobody knows anything, just exactly the same way as she uses the tampon.